a look at the CCP's plan to conquer Taiwan, and, ultimately, the world. It's all covered in today's China Truths. In October 2022, Chinese Communist Party leader Xi Jinping made a public appearance donning military attire at an Eastern Chinese command center. In a display of aggression, he ordered the regime's military branch to prepare itself for any potential conflict. While this behavior has become typical in Chinese communist diplomacy, the looming threat of a potential invasion of Taiwan and the highly anticipated meeting with U.S. President Joe Biden elevated the significance of Xi's words. Following their meeting in Indonesia, Biden expressed his belief that there was no need for a new Cold War and conveyed his desire for peaceful relations and stability with China in the Taiwan Strait. Shortly after, the CCP quoted Xi, stating that cross-strait peace and stability were incompatible with Taiwan's independence. This statement was yet another in a series of threats made by the CCP against so-called separatist forces in Taiwan, a label that Xi and his regime apply to the president of Taiwan and virtually all of the island's democratically elected government. Amid this bellicose rhetoric, the CCP has achieved tremendous military advancements, leading many experts to predict that an invasion of Taiwan is not only likely but also inevitable. Such a conflict could mark a pivotal point in the process of dethroning the United States from its position as the global order's undisputed leader. James Fanel, a former director of intelligence and information operations for the U.S. Pacific Fleet and current government fellow at the Geneva Center for Security Policy in Switzerland, contends that the Chinese Communist Party is playing a long game. Fanel suggests that the People's Republic of China PRC, has been engaged in a military modernization program for over two decades, a directive that has been reinforced by the CCP's past three leaders. Fanel argues that the PRC's military branch, the People's Liberation Army, has a two-pronged goal, to seize Taiwan and diminish America's position of power on the global stage. Fanel said, this ongoing PLA modernization program is aimed at supporting the CCP's strategic ambition to displace the United States from the Indo-Pacific and to ultimately restore the PRC to what they believe is China's rightful position as the leader of the world. Today, that entails leading the global order across all levers of national power, especially in the military domain, both conventional and nuclear. Total Military Superiority Dakota Wood, a senior research fellow at the conservative think tank the Heritage Foundation, spoke last year about China's conventional military buildup. According to Wood, the Chinese military surpasses that of the United States in almost every metric and has a numerical advantage with a multitude of land, air, and sea-based systems in any potential conflict. During an interview with NTD, a sister media outlet of the Epic Times, on October 18, 2022, would stated. Well, numerically, it's very concerning. I mean, just as an example, we've got fewer than 300 ships in the U.S. Navy. Of those, there are 100 at, at sea on any day. Of that 100, about 60 are in the Western Pacific. The Chinese Navy alone is 360 ships. So just in numbers, I mean, even if our ships are far better than theirs, it's still a six to one disadvantage. They're operating Fanel concurred with Wood's assessment, attributing China's numerical superiority to decades of investment and planning under the CCP's leadership. Fanel said, the initial focus of the PRC's military modernization program beginning in the early 2000s was largely focused on asymmetric weapons, like anti-ship crews and ballistic missiles. He asserted that these investments were initially intended to establish the CCP's counter-intervention strategy, which is more commonly known as anti-access or area denial in Western military circles. The strategy aims to prevent U.S. forces from intervening in the Indo-Pacific region, thereby ensuring that the CCP can invade Taiwan or forcibly acquire other territories in the South and East China Seas without the possibility of Western intervention. According to James Fanel, the CCP's Central Military Commission prioritized building its navy for two decades to provide the People's Liberation Army an advantage in anti-access and area denial forces. He said, during that time, we saw the initial focus on the buildup of the PLA Navy's submarine forces, and, over the past decade, that focus shifted into the mass production of frigates, destroyers, cruisers, and large-deck amphibious warships. 
the culmination of the naval modernization program was epitomized by the fielding of three aircraft carriers. The Navy now boasts advanced vessels, including the Type 075 amphibious assault ship, which is essential for future operations aimed at conquering Taiwan, and the Type 055 heavy cruiser, capable of launching hypersonic nuclear missiles designed to target U.S. aircraft carriers operating in the Indo-Pacific. According to Naval News, the new vessels and weapons could make the CCP's cruisers the most heavily armed warships worldwide. This development is transitioning the CCP's Navy from mere numerical superiority to a qualitative advantage, which can deter American forces in open battles with next-generation weapons. Fanel believes that the CCP's conventional military development is not limited to its Navy but also extends to its ground and air forces. However, the CCP's quest for military might extend beyond its conventional military development, and the regime hopes to accomplish much more through it. Fanel said, in the past two years, we have seen the CMC shift focus again to a new generation of asymmetric weapons such as hypersonic missiles and swarming unmanned systems from the sea, air, and land. Most importantly, CCP leaders have embarked on what may be the most threatening weapons development to date, the massive buildup of the PRC's nuclear arsenal. Nuclear Warfare the Chinese Communist Party has been relentlessly expanding and modernizing its nuclear capabilities across land, sea, and air. The recent unearthing of over 100 missile silos in western China over the last two years has done little to abate apprehensions about the Communist Party's new efforts to reinforce nuclear intimidation. The extensive amplification of the regime's nuclear weapons stockpile, projected by the Pentagon to exceed 1,000 weapons by 2030, is not the sole concern for the United States. In reality, the marked technological advancements in China's weaponry may pose an even graver threat. The CCP's novel hypersonic and intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs, exemplified by the Dongfeng-41, possess multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle systems. This unique feature enables each missile to carry multiple warheads, with the Dongfeng-41 carrying 10 such warheads, each capable of striking its designated target while the missile is orbiting. Therefore, each of the CCP's 1,000 new nuclear weapons could potentially house up to 10 nuclear warheads. If the CCP has already produced enough Dongfeng-41 missiles to fill all its new silos, it could have augmented its nuclear arsenal up to 14 times over. Fanel said, in the space of 24 months, the PLA rocket forces built 350 new ICBM silos in central and western China. These new silos are designed to support the DF-41 ICBM. With each missile having 10 multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles, this development has increased the PRC's nuclear arsenal from some 250 warheads to over 3,500. To the dismay of Western analysts, it is not easy to determine with precision how many nuclear weapons or warheads the regime possesses. This is because the CCP co-deploys its nuclear and conventional missiles, making it difficult for outsiders to distinguish a regular missile from a nuclear one when peering into a silo. This situation prompted Admiral Charles Richard, the U.S. Strategic Command's commander, to suggest that the regime was pursuing a strategic breakout that would enable it to match and surpass the United States' capabilities. During a speech in 2022, he said, As I assess our level of deterrence against China, the ship is slowly sinking. It is sinking slowly, but it is sinking, as fundamentally they are putting capability on the field faster than we are. Fanel's assessment was bleak, but ultimately he agreed with the notion that a nuclear breakout by the Chinese Communist Party could lead to a change in the regime's military doctrine about the use of nuclear weapons in a conflict. The CCP maintains a no-first-use policy, which means that it has committed to abstaining from initiating a nuclear war and never deploying nuclear weapons against non-nuclear states. Fanel said, this strategic breakout portends to shift the PRC's so-called no-first-use policy to one of first use, where Beijing can threaten nuclear blackmail against the US and its allies for coming to Taiwan's defense. This change is by far the most destabilizing PRC military modernization to date, 
one that will directly affect Taiwan's freedom, regional stability in the Indo-Pacific, and even shift the global balance of power in the near and long term. Despite its relatively stated position, the CCP has consistently refused to participate in nuclear non-proliferation talks and, according to U.S. defense strategy, is deliberately expanding and upgrading its nuclear arsenal, which threatens the United States. Furthermore, the CCP's aim of establishing a multipolar world with itself at the center of global events is crucial to its primary strategic goal of supplanting the United States. Therefore, while the United States is searching for solutions to maintain the status quo in diplomacy and military matters, the CCP has no such intentions. Its objective is to dismantle the status quo, not to sustain it. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall highlighted this precise issue during a talk in September 2022, declaring that one of the most significant changes has been the nuclear breakup of China. The only nation-state that, now, has the capacity, the resources, and the strategic intent to really threaten the United States as a leader in the world, is China. There will be an invasion. The question of why China has been aggressively expanding its military capabilities with new weaponry, including nuclear arms, appears to have a straightforward answer. The Chinese Communist Party plans to use this force in the near future, with Taiwan being its primary target. The CCP considers Taiwan a renegade province that must be reunited with the mainland and has not ruled out the use of military action to achieve this goal. Despite the CCP's claims, Taiwan has been self-governing since 1949 and is home to a thriving democratic government and market economy. The United States recognizes China diplomatically but does not endorse the CCP's claims to Taiwan and maintains economic and legal ties with Taipei which obligates it to provide the necessary military support for the island's defense. Western analysts and strategists have expressed growing concerns over the possibility of the PLA invading Taiwan, and many are now focusing on how the United States and its allies can deter China from such action. However, some experts believe that the invasion is inevitable and that the only option left is to fight it. Retired Air Force Brigadier General Robert Spaulding has warned that the escalating tensions between the CCP, Taiwan, and the United States will lead to a conflict and that it is too late to deter such an outcome. He said, the situation will be resolved. It will be resolved when the Chinese invade Taiwan. There is no way to deter it. The resolution is the invasion, and the invasion will come at a time of China's choosing. There's nothing we can do at this point to stop it. According to Spaulding, the CCP's military and foreign policy towards the United States is aimed at pushing Washington away from defending Taiwan in the event of an invasion. He argues that regardless of the outcome, a war between China and Taiwan would lead to a global catastrophe, possibly even a nuclear war. Nevertheless, Spaulding stated that the CCP's determination to extinguish Taiwan's democratic way of life through the use of force is unwavering. The CCP leadership is shrewd enough to realize that the people of Taiwan would never voluntarily unite with communist China. Spaulding said, they're not going to abandon their military force when it comes to taking Taiwan. They think that's the only way to get reunification. He added that the regime is likely correct in its assessment. Taiwan boasts Asia's most thriving democracy, a world-class market economy, and a population that enjoys a broad range of civil and political liberties. Spaulding remarked, given what they did to Hong Kong, there's no way that they're going to convince the Taiwanese people peacefully to join China. There is no way that the Taiwanese population is going to want to come under the yoke of the Chinese Communist Party. Everybody's eyes are wide open. The only question to ask is, when is that invasion going to come? The US must acknowledge the new Cold War. When it comes to the issue of Taiwan and the potential for a catastrophic conflict, James Fanel believes that the United States still has a chance to deter such a war, but it will require immediate and vigorous action. He said, to take on this threat, the United States must first acknowledge that the threat is existential and that it must dominate the whole of government agenda regardless of which political party is in power. 
As it relates to the military realm, the U.S. must reprioritize its national security strategy away from one of cooperation and competition with the PRC to one of a war footing against the CCP, which is in a cold war with the U.S. Fanel called on Congress to pass a bill to expand the U.S. Navy to a minimum of 355 combat vessels, comparable to the dramatic increase in maritime power achieved during World War II. In addition, Fanel stressed the need for the United States to provide further military support to Taiwan, Japan, and its other allies with weapons capable of sinking PLA fleets. While Congress has approved many such sales, bureaucratic red tape and regulations are slowing the flow of weapons to the point that some orders placed by Taiwan may take years to fulfill. Ultimately, Fanel believes that the CCP is in a cold war with the United States and that the United States must recognize this reality to prevent a global conflict. Only through its expansion and modernization can the United States hope to remain the leader of the free world. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.